Hi, it's Stacy at Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks. We are back for part two of Fabulous Flyers. And this is the part of the week where we give you a whole lot of activities to do at home and in your neighborhood. So since we're humans and we can't fly unless we're in an airplane or a helicopter, we thought we would give you a few different fun activities where you can test out uh, test out some things to figure out what flies and what doesn't and also build some paper airplanes and see which ones might mimic animals in nature as well as try to build your own parachute. All right, sound good? So we're going to start out with some objects and a little activity I like to call fly or not. So I've got this tray might look like a mess to you, but it's just some random objects I picked up from around the nature center. A lot of it might be things that you have where you live. I'm sure you've got Kleenex, you've got paper that you can crumple up, maybe some plastic leftover plasticware, pieces of old dried grass, dry leaves you can get, cotton balls, flowers that are drying up, recycle a lid that you can reuse, get rate it from the recycling. Some curly ribbon, other ribbon, a little puppet. You can come up with whatever objects you find around and a fan. Now we have a little box fan here. If you don't have a fan at home, you think of something you might be able to use? Yeah, just blow, use your own breath. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move my tray behind the fan we're gonna make a guess or a prediction and we're gonna see which objects fly or float and which ones don't, all right? So just, I want you to look at my tray for a moment. See if you can make some guesses or predictions. Are any of these things gonna fly? Are any gonna glide? Are any of them gonna just gonna drop? You can do this in water too. We'll do that later this summer. All right, here we go. Cotton ball. That didn't do what I thought it would. Whoop. You could do that with dandelions. Okay, stick, twig. <laughs> the spoon side. Went a little ways when it caught that little lip of the spoon worked. Caught it. It went further than I thought it would. Okay, we're down to the last four objects. Grass blades. Ribbon. Now think about this. If you're going to make a kite or a paper airplane, if you wanted a tail, would this be a good tail? Or this? Ooh, that one further. Whoa, that one just won the record. Why do you think? Hmm, we'll talk a little bit more about feathers and specialized, how specialized they are and how they catch some more of that wind. But all right, so did anything surprise you? I, I was surprised. I was surprised how far those cotton balls went. The paper is almost at the end of the table, but by far the winner, if it was a contest, would be the feather. So you can do this with things at home, figure out what moves, what doesn't play with the different direction of the fan and how strong it is. And this might help you think about Hmm, what's going to float, what's going to sink, and what's going to fly? And next, we'll see if you can build your own parachute. So, we know what things will move when the wind blows, but do we know what floats? We thought it would be fun for you to challenge you to make your own parachute. 
So we made three parachutes out of things just sitting around at the nature center, which you probably have where you live. So we had some thicker paper cardstock. You can use regular paper or two sheets or three sheets of regular paper together. And this one, we got a square of paper. To make a square, you just make a triangle, cut off the end. I ended up folding it. I thought that might help, I didn't know. Folded it all different directions, so I had all these little lines to make triangles. Had a hole punch. If you don't have a hole punch, just get a pencil and poke some holes in the corners. Got some string or some yarn and cut four pieces. And then I, right here, we happen to have a spool of thread here, but you can find something really lightweight. Uh, heavyweight stuff, it's just gonna fall right away. Tied them up, that's number one. Number two parachute we have is a thin piece of cloth, kind of like a handkerchief uh, or a bandana. So if you have a bandana sitting around or part of a really old pillowcase or t-shirt that's ripped and old, some thread, just tied it on those four corners and that really, really lightweight um, Monarch Butterfly finger puppet. Our last one is a plastic bag. You can get one. I'm sure you have those sitting around. Reuse it. Yarn, four pieces of yarn. I cut off, this was a deeper or bigger trash bag for like a trash can, but you could use just one from a grocery. And then cut off the ends. And then I spread out and I tied four corners. And then we've got a handy dandy whiteboard marker. So of these three, do you think any of them are gonna float? Let's find out. It's a breezy day. You can see which way my hair's flying into my eyes. So which way would you guess they're gonna fly? Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna try to get up as high as I can to give these as much chance as they can, as much time in the air before they drop. So find a big open space where there's not gonna be any power lines around and we'll see what happens. And I'll just let you know, it's an experiment. So you don't know what's gonna happen. You might need to try it a few times and you might need to tweak or change your parachutes as you go. Here we go. Number one. Ooh, it floated down there for a little bit. Number two, we have got the cloth parachute with the Monarch Butterfly Finger Puppet. Ooh, nice float. And then number three, oh, we lost our flying marker. Make sure you secure your passengers at all times. All right, we'll get this on here. Ooh, look how that opened up. It caught a lot of air. Think about the designs of maybe a hot air balloon. That reminded me of a hot air balloon. And when you think about things in nature like milkweed seeds or, dra or uh, dandelion seeds that have one seed hanging and a whole bunch of poof. Think about what helps things float. Up next, you're gonna be able to work with Shannon all about making some paper airplanes and see if they end up reminding you of any animals in nature. Thanks, Stace. Parachutes are a lot of fun. You can do a lot of different experiments with them. But what I want to know is, can anyone perfect their parachute making ability so that they can make a parachute that's big enough and good enough to float a raw egg to the ground without it cracking? This is what I want to know. I would love to hear about it if you can manage to make that happen. But right now, we've saved the best for last. Paper airplanes. I loved paper airplanes when I was a kid. I loved making them. Me and my brothers would make them all the time. I was always jealous of people who knew how to make a whole bunch of different kinds because I only knew one or two styles, but I knew people that could make all these great planes that could do loop-de-loops and different things. Well, I found a really cool website. It's called foldandfly.com. It has a whole bunch of different paper airplane patterns. Easy, medium, hard, and expert. So I picked four of them. 
They're all either me easy or medium. And we're gonna have a little paper airplane contest here because I made some that kind of reminded me of some different animals that live here in Minnesota and the way they fly. So I've got four styles here. This one is called the basic dart. This is the one I always made as a kid. This was the one we knew how to make the best and um, it flies pretty well. It's classic and it's a go-to kind of paper airplane. That's the basic dart. This one is called uh, the sprinter. If I'm holding it right. I don't even actually, oh no, I think it goes this way. Here we go. The sprinter, supposedly um, it stays up in the air for a very long time and goes a great distance. We'll see. Again, experimenting today because experiments are so much fun. This one is called a loop plane. Supposedly does a loop to loop. Um, it involves a little bit of cutting. All you need to make any of these planes is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, a scissors and a ruler. That's it, super simple. And then this last one here is called an underside plane. I'm not sure why they call it that, but um, that's what they call it. And it's supposed to stay aloft for a while. So we'll see. What I'm gonna do with my four planes here is we're gonna, we're gonna set up and we're gonna have a little contest and see how they fly and see if you can guess which animal is which. So the four animals that I had in mind uh, when I made these was a gliding hawk, a flying squirrel, a diving falcon, and a butterfly. So see if you can guess which one is gonna fly like which animal and we're gonna check it out here in just a second. And here we are in the atrium. I have a nice open area with a little bit of a distance so my planes can go nice and far if I need them to. Now remember, we're looking for four different animals. A gliding hawk that can go a ways, a flying squirrel that just sort of floats and glides, a diving falcon, they dive after their prey, and a fluttering butterfly. So of my four planes, we're gonna decide which is which. I'm starting with my old standby, the basic dart, the one I made as a kid all the time. So here we go. Let's see what our basic dart does. That one went a pretty good distance. So what do you think? Hawk? Squirrel? Falcon? Butterfly? I'm thinking that one is more like the hawk. It went a ways and it got pretty far. Here's my underside plane. Let's see what this one does. We're down to the squirrel, the falcon, or the butterfly. Oh, that one floated very nicely. So I would say that's either the butterfly or the squirrel, but butterflies kind of, right? They don't really fly straight. I think that one is more like the flying squirrel. Went kind of straight, glided very nice. So we've got a hawk, we've got a flying squirrel. This is my sprinter. Let's see if the sprinter actually sprints. That one did kind of dive a little bit. It floated up a little bit and then went almost straight down. That one reminds me of a falcon diving after its prey, which would leave us with the butterfly for this little loop plane here. What do you think? Is the loop plane gonna fly like a butterfly? Is it going to actually do a loop? Let's see. It did do a loop and it floated a lot like a butterfly. So those are my four that I made mimicking some different animals. Uh, Fold and Fly has a lot of different uh, ones that you can make. You can make those and try them out or you can make something different. They have four levels, easy, medium, hard, expert. So give it a try. Experiment a little. You don't have to use printer paper. You could use cardstock, newspaper. You could try tissue paper. It's not very heavy, but experiment. Make a bunch of different designs. Have some contests with your friends. You can even use their design and fix it up a little bit, change it a little bit, change how you fold the wings, do some different things with it. Paper airplanes are so much fun to experiment with and the sky is the limit when you get out your paper airplanes. So until next time, see you later.